So it's my great yes. pleasure to introduce uh, Gabor Forges from the United States of America, um, uh, who gave marvelous talk today. Basically, on the future, what do we do with mankind and printing? Now, how could you say it in simple terms? <sighs> mankind and printing. Uh, <laughs> those are those are bombastic words. Well, we have to introduce uh, the bombastic words. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's really the question that uh, most of the people in this field ask. Uh, okay, can we live forever? And, um, and, and it's a tricky one because uh, if you can sustain your, your mental and physical abilities, maybe so. But, but at some point, um, you really need to ask yourself the question, do I want to live forever? Now, that's the philosophical part of the question. Is, the, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it going to be ever a realistic uh, uh, thought? So, as I said in my talk, um, I think that we will be able to produce noble organs, um, uh, not necessarily the kinds that we carry in our body, uh, but, but the ones that will function and, and operate the same way as the ones we have. And for that, I think uh, there, is, there is realistic chance but don't ask me okay but uh, uh, no i'm not asking when but for example uh, i think it sounds realistic for example that you'll be able probably to print an ear right oh oh absolutely yeah. then a uh, lung would be more complex yeah uh, and and those you know you can still live without uh, without yeah, an sure. ear right but, but you cannot live without lung. lung so those those structures you can do even today True. uh not necessarily by printing even though by printing ear was one of the first little organ structures that that people show that they can be can be can be printed. Uh, yeah, those those are easy. I mean, but looking from the history as well, that just means we need more time, basically, because complexity and whatever other structures were well, in the time. Well, uh, maybe so, but maybe not. You know, when it comes to s structures like like a heart, like a lung, which which are really, uh, if you think about it, nature tinkered with right. it for millions of years. Yes. So. So just to, to, to produce that uh, cell by cell. Yes, thank you. But you had, you had some other argument, which was basically on eating uh, let's, what some call artificial meat, basically printed meat, and the other one was basically on well, the leather. kind of leather. Yeah. So can you comment on those two? Because it's also very good argument. Yeah, so, so that's, a, that's a new direction, I think, for many uh, in the field. Uh, it, is, it is tissue engineering, especially if you work with cells, beyond the typical uh, realm of tissue engineering, which is regenerative medicine, and if if we can mimic the materials that we wear, that we eat, uh, that we cherish, and originate from animals by the same technology, uh, that would be that that just has uh, implications that we I don't think we can we can even weigh today, because of the of the of the overpopulation of the of the of the earth by animals uh, the the environmental footprint that, that, that those industries really represent. Um, this is a very promising direction for, for tissue engineering and this kind of research. And, and, and I can see that uh, this is going to be very lucrative in the future. In the leather as well? Well, I would say the leather primarily because um, uh, the, the, the meat, it has more uh, um, philosophical issues because sure. it's one thing to carry a, a bag and it's another thing to ingest something into your body mm -hmm. so people will have no problem carrying uh, this leather items uh, but they might have problems there are two other aspects very interesting to everybody in your talk the first one was actually you commenting on the differences in approach let's say from physics let's say to biology and now in the in the kind of real world all three you experienced and you can comment already on that one how oversimplified the things in 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 physics probably remain too arrogant which mm -hmm, is probably mm -hmm. one of them yeah so so um i myself i was trained as a theoretical physicist mm -hmm. brutally theoretical physicist mm -hmm. particle physics and then <clears throat> uh when i realized that i really i have i have a love for for biology I wanted to become a medical doctor, then I chickened out. Mm. I went back to school, so sure. I did biology. So, so I, I realized, I think, early on that in order to be able to talk to biologists, you have to learn their language. They are not going to learn quantum mechanics and that sort of thing. Right. But what they study is just a beautiful, beautiful subject. So I did, and then I, with a col collaborator of mine, we wrote a book in, uh, in 2005 um, combining 
basically physics with biology uh, in presenting early development in a language that is accessible to physicists as well as for biologists. So my intention is, and, and I'm still working on that, to bring the two communities together. But I think physicists really have to learn that uh, 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 just sitting on the high horse and thinking that yeah. because we know what is Schrodinger's equation and that no, sort yeah. of things, we know everything, and this is simply not true. But in the, in the future education, you see we integrate more. Like the Absolutely. world Greeks used to have the physics, basically science of nature. So you would basically Ab go in that direction. Absolutely. And 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 when I started, it was very difficult because yes. biologists didn't want to talk to me, right. physicists didn't want to talk to me. Yeah. And times have changed so drastically. we agree in that sense. But yeah. there is another aspect to you, because you're also academic scientists, you just explained, but you also now have these companies. So right. can you comment on this? Like, you know, real-world investments, that dynamics is compared to that, and that's a Yeah, so, so I feel very lucky, mm -hmm. uh, because how many, how many times, how often does it happen that, that a, a, an academic scientist can see the, the fruits of his research sure. or her research in, in the marketplace, or I, I should say, some, some beneficial value of his research uh, for, for mankind. And I'm not, a, I'm not a businessman by any stretch of imagination. I have a son who is a businessman mm -hmm. and also a very smart guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he saw um, uh, commercial potential behind what we are doing. And so that's how I got into the, sure. into the business world. But I, I have to say, it opened a, a new vistas for me, and I enjoy it very much. However, I can't resist. You were educated originally in Europe, and probably mostly in Hungary, I guess. Right. Now you operate in the United States. By all means, you surely also occasionally go to you know, Asian countries and so on. Right. So what is your opinion on that? Is there still a lot to be learned in Europe, for example, in this competitive openness that you seem to have in the United States of America? You mean that can Europe learn something yes, from this? Yes, or absolutely, you, you know absolutely. Both, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 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 um, uh, in this respect, and both systems have their pros and cons. Sure. But uh, as far as inventiveness, mm -hmm. um, uh, daring to support new ideas, uh, let's face it, it it's it's it's. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sad to say because I'm a European that the United States is far far, far um, advanced, more advanced than, than Europe is. Europe is catching up, but there are, just as with everything here, there are historical reasons why it doesn't work. It just doesn't have that culture that, that people just give their money and, uh, and, and invest in, in uncertain things. Well, in the United States, everything is uncertain, was uncertain, and somehow that, that translated into, into this uh, more open investment uh, policy that the country follows and and yes it's much easier to to, to 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 start a company in the United States than in Europe. So basically you would encourage us to continue with conferences like this that are pluridisciplinary, open, visionary and the nice settings? Well the nice setting that, that, that there's uh, I already said that it's, it's just it's, it's, it's like a fairy tale mm. uh, so absolutely if, if for nothing else you should continue <laughs> but but um, yeah so so I myself was involved in in this kind of uh, conferences, multidisciplinary conferences in Lesouche, mm -hmm. uh, French sure. school. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is marvelous. Uh, it has its own um, trap though, mm -hmm. because, because uh, it's good to have multidisciplinary meetings, yeah. but you have to still somehow limit mm -hmm. uh, the ideas. And, and I don't know, we'll, we'll see, but and it's the first time that I'm here, it might be a little bit too broad. Sure. And and um, if you lose focus, then yeah, people of course love to come here because it's very very beautiful. Uh, but but you would like to have some kind of uh, maybe uh, focal point. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I mean, when you theories. say okay. from solid state physics to biophysics, solid state physics yeah, is sure. enormous. Yeah, biophysics yeah. is eno enormous. Yes. Okay. So which channel? Um, so if, 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 if that can be a little bit more focused, I think that would be even better. But and we'll need more books like your book to have more people also educate. Well, you said that, not me. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think we'll meet next time and discuss next Thank round. you very Thank much you for, for the invitation. I, I'm really and truly enjoying it. Indeed.